Unless you need special macro functions or extra keys, I think you can game on any keyboard. There's no extra advantage. So when choosing the right board for you, I recommend looking at a few things like cost, size, overall design, what kind of sound you want, and overall quality, and any extra features. Personally, I'm usually using a corner desk. Size isn't an issue. I just want as many keys as possible. The G-Skill KM780 RGB has six extra keys on the left, macro record, and three mode keys, along with Windows lock and brightness on the left. The extra keys are quite close to the regular ones, no doubt for ease of use, but they will take some getting used to. You will hit them accidentally. If you're wondering why the LEDs are flickering, that's just what it looks like on camera. They look fairly smooth in person, but they are the old type of LED and need to be updated. On the right, it has dedicated media keys, a volume wheel, and a display showing the volume. The media and mode keys have a fairly nice soft feel to them. They're not that terrible plastic type that's loud and feels cheap, so I'm quite happy with those. The volume wheel is metal and scrolls smoothly, so they've done well there. I love having these extra features. Where the board does fail a bit is in the design. They've added some pipes on the left and right, making the board an extra 6 centimeters long. It's a total of about 51 centimeters, which will use extra room on your desk, and it's just for the look. This seems very unnecessary. A standard design would have been much better. The problem with over-designing the board continues with the wrist rust. If you just look at it, it looks kind of pleasing, because it has a little indented section in the middle, but in practice, that's where your right hand will rest. So that alters the overall comfort. It's not bad, but it's clearly only there for the look. I think designs need to be based in practicality. The wrist rust can be removed, and then there's no problem but I like having a wrist rust. This one feels good with its textured rubber and matte plastic finish. So hopefully on the next, they keep a plain design. Without the wrist rust, it's about 17 centimeters, and with it, it's 22. The key heights are about 4.5 centimeters at the back, 3.5 at the front, and with the stance down, five centimeters at the back. On the base, there is no cable management system, but there are some rubber feet to keep it in place. On the back, front, and wrist rust. On the back, there's a USB port and a headphone and mic jack. There's also a mouse cable holder, which isn't a bad feature to have, but it's not going to act as a bungee. And the cable is about two meters long and braided. It's an open board design, making it easier to clean, and the LEDs stand out a bit more. And the plate underneath the keys is aluminium. They also provide some extra keys, as well as a keycap remover. I prefer the standard caps, so I'm not using these. The switches are Cherry MX Reds, also available in Cherry Brown and Blue. The keycaps are a decent size, and don't feel too cheap, but to me, they don't feel as high quality as, say, Corsair which you see on the right. Very similar, just not quite as good. And maybe the texture of the Corsair cap is the reason for that. Here's a typing test at various speeds so you know what they sound like. Other than a low-pitched metal noise, I think they sound quite good, and that was of course without O-rings. In the software, you can set profiles and save them to the device. The keys can be changed to other functions, including multimedia and launch program. I couldn't find a way to open folders though. You can also set macros, which will detect mouse and keyboard commands. In lighting, you can have these modes, my favorite being wave, and you can change the gradients. In settings, you have the usual, and then some extra lighting options, and holding down as many keys as I can, that's plenty, no problem there at all. In conclusion, it has some great features, and I've enjoyed using it, but I hope they refine the design a bit more. The overall quality is quite good, but it also needs some updating. Looking at Amazon, on special, it's a great deal, and I'd be happy to buy it and use it as my main. But for 140, I would shop around. That doesn't mean I wouldn't buy it, it just means it has more competition then. So I like what I'm seeing, and I hope they continue this line of keyboards. Hope that helps you in your decision. If you want to buy one and help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. Special thanks to G-Skill for sending this out for review, and as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.